little creatures of the night, Mochiko here, and tonight we are playing some more walkthrough, episode 2 to be exact. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but in episode 1 I was extremely nervous. <laughs> Let's try to get rid of those vibes and get on with the video. I have a lot to point out to you guys and I'm really excited to get into it. So let's start with the questing. We need to speak to Automai, so let's do that. Also, there seems to be a lot of people online tonight, so that's fun. So, here you are in the Incarnum Plains. You must be extra careful because the area has been altered by stasis, which is not normal at all. Alright, so in episode 1 I told you guys to read some of the questions um, for yourself and get some more info in the game, but I do think it's important for us, considering what was just said, to address what stasis is. So we're gonna choose, I have some questions for you. And where is the stasis? Is stasis evil then? Evil? No! But it's a bit more complicated than that. To make things easier for you, let's say that Wakfu and stasis are Complementary, two diametrically opposed types of the same energy. Generally speaking, Wakfu is associated with change, movement, and by extension, life. Stasis, on the other hand, is considered to be the energy behind stability, immobility, and by extension, death. But that's an oversimplification. If Wakfu and stasis aren't balanced, the whole world, even the whole cosmos, would be irreparably destroyed. What is that sort of temple over there? It seems that Incarnum suffered greatly during Ogorus's chaos, the cataclysm that ravaged the World of Twelve 200 years ago. The chaos didn't have a direct impact. The primordial doofus that my little Ogorest has in his possession didn't give him enough power to attack this place. No, something sadder happened here. What happened? During the Flood, the number of Twelveans who lost their lives was such that Incarnum was overflowing with souls wanting to reincarnate. Under the power of the Flux, the old Incarnum of the Doofus era disintegrated, and a new Incarnum has slowly been built over the centuries. The temple seems to be a ruin from that time, that the souls impaired when they passed, and they inscribed their memories of the World of Twelve. The place must be chock full of interesting information, as much about the world as its inhabitants. Okay, so firstly, I have a lot of questions here. Um, was the dragon affected when this whole place was kind of like revamped? And why is it so much smaller? The dragon is still the same size, right? So this incarnum is, I think, like... Not even a fraction of what Doofus's Incarnum's, like, map is. If you if you go look at my Doofus episodes, and you go check out how big Incarnum is, it makes no sense that this is supposed to span the whole area of the dragon's back, but it's super small, and it, it really just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but that's just my thoughts that I wanted to share with you guys, and... I don't know, something that irks me a little bit about the backstory here, but I do get what they were trying to do. It just really doesn't make sense if you look at the two different worlds, whether it's thousands of years later. Um, the dragon's back size should not be affected, thus the whole area should be as big as it used to be in Dofus. But okay, rebuilt smaller apparently. Also, there's a hole over there. Um, which is also questionable, is there a hole in the dragon's back? <laughs> okay, I'm just going into this way too much. Let's continue, because if I think about this too much, I'm just going to obsess about it, and that's bad. So, okay, that could be interesting. I'll go see. Okay, so we have an another quest updated, search for the past. We have to read the first fresco. We're going to get to that in a second. We're just going to accept the second quest. The second question is, what exactly do I have to do? We must find Oliverhan. I'm convinced that he's linked to the source of the problems we're witnessing in Incarnum. 
I don't know which way he went. Go and see if you can find any trace of him. I'm going to try and find something to contain the spread of the stasis. Okay, I'm on my way. Follow quests and the compass. If several quests are available, you can do all of them. You can activate the compass for the steps that interest you by using the quest interface. So we can click here on the little compass button that they're pointing out. World map. The map allows you to see where you are and enable you to locate your objectives. The orange marker shows the location indicated by your compass. So you can open your map simply by pressing M as your default shortcut or by clicking on this indicated icon. Let's do that. Oh my gosh, I'm really in love with how they created and made the map. It looks beautiful. I think it's very fitting for Incarnum. You can see the dragon and the whole Incarnum on its back again though. Considering the doofus size and this, it doesn't really make sense to me, but whatever. It's supposed to probably be magic and stuff, so maybe that's got something to do with it. I just don't get it, personally. Also, it's a bit sad that we only see the Iop God. I would have liked to see at least one other God somewhere on the other side, but you know, those are just minor details. Overall, this map looks really, really pretty. I love it. Alright, let's take a look at the map itself and all the points of interest that are shown here. So firstly, let's look at the character's location indicated over here. Then this is the Incarnum Zop or the Zop. This is how Zops look on the maps. Then we've got a point of interest, the Temple Ruins, which we are going to check out soon. This is actually the little quest symbol to point that out. And then we've got the Incarnum Dungeon over there as well. All the points of interest can be located on this little bar on the left bottom side here. And this little icon, Characters, if you enable it, it shows you all the different clan members in their location. I'll talk a bit more in depth about clan members in a future episode, but for now, just know that you can check the area's recommended level by looking at this little star or, well, the clan member. This bottom right bar can be used to place personal points of interest. Personally, I've never really used this bar. And at the top right, you can see the base general info on your location and its recommended level for the area. Alright, enough about the map. Let's talk a bit about the movable on-screen items like the minimap and the quests. So, <laughs> as you can see, the quests were popped out for me a little bit. I had it up here to the right. This is where I usually prefer putting my little mini map and my quests. But you can move it to anywhere on the screen that you want. You can also flip it around, which is the first time that I found that out, actually. <laughs> I feel quite silly, but now I'm happy that I learned that with you guys. So you can put this anywhere and it flips around when you go to the sides of the screen. You just have to keep it there for a little bit. And there you go. <laughs> Also, it's worth mentioning, at the top right of the screen, you can see the clan member and the clan member info. As I said, I will address this in a future episode, but I just wanted to show you guys. You can click on the information of the clan member, and then there will be weather eventually and some Wakfu general info. For now, let's talk a little bit about the taskbars. It can be a bit intimidating when you're first starting out to know where everything is, so I figured I could show you guys around a little bit, like we did in Dofus. First up is this little section over here, this little stick man. Um, <laughs> it's the characteristics. You can open it by clicking on this little icon, or you can press P. Then we've got spells. Again, you can open it by using the shortcut S or clicking on the little icon. And then we've got inventory. Again, you can click on the icon or press the shortcut I. Then we've got community. Community actually pops open when you click on it. And then you can access guild by either clicking on the icon or pressing G. You can access your contact book, which is your friend list by clicking on it or pressing C. 
And then you can also look at your passport or you can press Shift and P to open it. The passport is another item that I'm going to address in a future episode, so look out for that. Then we've got quest management. It also pops up. Then you can look at tutorials again. Um, this is actually really nifty. I never looked at it before doing this tutorial for you guys. And it's really, really nice. You guys should check it out if you are a bit confused about things in the game. So you can click on the icon or press Shift and T to open that one. Then we've got rewards, or you can press Shift and R. And the quest book, which is very important. Or you can open it with the shortcut key Q. Let's actually take a more in-depth look at the quest book before I show you the last two icons. So this is what the quest book looks like. First, on the right you get the world section. These are all the quests that you get in the world and its various locations. Then you've got the mercenary posts, which we'll learn about in the future. We've got Mount Zinnit, you've got the Almanax quests, and then you've got heritage quests. But right now we only have Incarnum quests under the world section, so let's take a quick look at that. We've got Searching for the Past, and when you left click on it, it opens up the quest page for you. It's a level 2 quest, as you can see, and it can be done by one person. Eventually, if it's something that needs to be completed by a team, you'll see more of these little characters being lined up here. So, our quest is as follows. Incarnum is a strange place, full of mysteries. But the world of Twelve, your next destination, is no less of a mystery for you. Indeed, you don't have many memories of what happened before your death. If you like, follow Automai's advice, explore the region and find the temple. There, you should have access to information about your future home world. Okay, and the part of the quest that we need to do is we need to read the frescoes. We're going to do that fairly soon. Then we've got the rewards, 500 XP for completing the quest. And of course, we get the title Incarnum Chronicler. Then the other quest is hunting for all of them, they're external. Left click on it again and we can see it's a level 2 quest and you can solo it. For a birth, that wasn't exactly a walk in the park. And unlike the lucky ones who are born from their mother's womb, you'll always remember your painful coming into being. But don't go thinking your ordeal's over yet. Now you've got to finish what you started. Overcoming the threat which is bearing down on Incarnum by helping Automai. That's a good start for a new Euro, if all goes well. Your adventures with Automai since your incarnation have created a link between you. He's your best option for survival as a newly incarnated soul, so long as you follow his instructions. Now you must find Oliveran's trail, which doesn't seem like it will be easy. And to complete this quest, we'll need to search the dungeon surroundings, search the north plateaus, and search the south plains. Um, our rewards are two emotes, actually. A plotting emote and cry emote. Okay, now we can look at the last two icons. After the quest management icon, you get the show the map icon. You can press M as the shortcut or simply click on this icon. And then you've got the menu. Click on the icon or press escape as the shortcut. I'm going to open the menu option and I have a couple of options enabled that you guys can look at and decide if you'd want to enable them as well. But overall, as any game, take a look at these and personalize them according to your own playstyle. Okay guys, I'm gonna end the episode here. We'll continue the quest in episode 3. Let us just sit over here. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video and that it was informative. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate you so much. Until next time, stay safe. Bye guys!